Hey, welcome back. Uh, day two on this Buick exploded intake plenum. And I appreciate the tips that some of the viewers gave uh, about this being a, a more common problem than I thought. I've just never seen it, but it's no surprise. I mean, I'm in Anchorage, Alaska, and I operate a small shop. I'm over here in obscurity. So I only see what, what rolls in here. Um, so kind of a, a niche shop with a select group of customers. But anyway, uh, sounds like a common issue with leaky uh, fuel pressure regulators on these. What I did was remove the vacuum line to the fuel pressure reg and apply a vacuum with the handheld vacuum pump. I also monitored the fuel pressure for any uh, bleed down with the fuel system pressurized and that all looks good. All right, well, it's not leaking down any pressure. Um, still no signs of leakage at the pressure regulator. Another talk with the customer. We're gonna plow forward with this. I'm just gonna do a oil change, an upper intake plenum, uh, replace the manifold absolute pressure sensor that's blown up and uh, pressure regulator and uh, get this thing back on the road and hope for the best. I gave him a little disclaimer, uh, you know, Hope it don't blow up later because uh, it ain't going to be under warranty. But we're going to do that and proceed onward. Hopefully we'll, we'll find the root of the problem along the way. But uh, yeah, we just gotta, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Um, it's better than uh, just scrapping the thing. It's only got 50,000 miles on this rig. Uh, so uh, it's probably worth doing even though it's, it's getting old. Um, so anyway. We're gonna do this. I actually found the GM original equipment manifold, the fuel pressure regulator. So we're gonna put some quality parts on here, get them fixed up.
Here's our cylinder heads off our shop truck. Um, that's the 460 engine I got out of the shop push truck that overheated and had some issues with valve train. Um, so did a full head job even though I only had 10,000 on these heads, but uh, needed to go through and make sure we we're go since I got the motor out, do it right and. Uh, ended up that uh, actually the intake or actually the uh, exhaust valve height uh, was about 20 over the minimum uh, or the maximum installed height so uh, they went ahead and uh, shimmed adjusted all the spring pressure uh, ground the valves of course cleaned things up surfaced them pressure test them all that and then uh, set the uh, installed height and uh, also had them shim uh, actually shave about almost 20 thousandths off top of these guides and put those improved uh, oil seals on the valve guides so these puppies are good to go hopefully uh, 
not going to have any more issues with these. These are original equipment heads. Well, one of them is, and the other one's a replacement casting. But basically, just a light um, port job that I did on them. Just kind of some port matching and polish and dressed up the uh, around the guides and uh, just inside the uh, valve seats and whatnot and port matched them like I said polished them up a bit so uh, get a little better flow even though the OE heads flow pretty good there's a little you can do to the intake manifold as well to improve flow but uh, these are pretty decent heads so I'm excited to put this thing back together I'll show you a little more later about uh, the other stuff we're putting into this. Okay, GM replacement plenum. Swapped out the throttle body. Place a thermostat. There's a little bit of leakage there.
Well, I wish I was replacing the injectors, but currently there are none available in town and I would have to order them in, um, which is fine, but they're also rather expensive. So I am going to clean them up, uh, replace the O-rings, and uh, I'm going to run some injector cleaner through it and uh, cross my fingers. I don't like the fact that we didn't really identify the source of leakage. The services regulator while we're here. That's all cleaned out. There we are. Let's put 
put this injector rail in. Okay, finally I'm going to change the oil and filter just in case we have fuel dilution in the oil. <laughs> Looks like it was due for changing anyway. So, certainly not going to hurt. We'll just refill the cooling system with our airlift tool. We probably need to flush this system out here um, later.
but for now we'll just uh, make sure everything's good to go. Okay, nothing to do but crank this baby off and see how it goes. We shall see. Scared. Very scared. Plug your ears. Kaboom! False alarm, battery dead. Uh, I had the firing order wrong. I, I probably just about blew the freaking intake off this thing again. Super sad, man. I screwed up. <sighs> but I straightened it out and we're ready for take two. Uh, I had the firing order wrong. I, I probably just about blew the freaking intake off this thing again. Super sad, man. I screwed up. <sighs> but I straightened it out and we're ready for take two. Oh, or take three. Gee whiz. I give up. I'm ready to retire. So I made an interesting discovery. Uh, got it running, but it, it really ran like crap, you know, even after the firing order was straightened out. Uh, and I had a check engine light illuminated. I went ahead and pulled the codes, and I had an EGR pintle position code. And uh, I went ahead and uh, I looked at the data, and my EGR pintle was at 70%. So I pulled the EGR valve, and the pintle is stuck wide open. But it doesn't have any contamination in it, and uh, it's just, it just broke. Um, you know, it's one of those motorized EGRs. Uh, so I uh, have a theory, though, and I think this had something to do with the explosion because uh, even on startup, we were getting exhaust straight into the upper plenum where that EGR uh, diffuser comes in. There's a tube inside the upper plenum uh, where the uh, EGR gas is dispersed. So having the EGR uh, all the way open, even on a cold startup, uh, even if there was a slight amount of, uh, you know, the, or the right amount of fuel air mixture in the plenum, there's your ignition source. Doesn't even have to backfire. So uh, interesting discovery there. I'm going to throw a new EGR on it. Get this thing buttoned up and back on the road. I appreciate you watching. I hope this video was helpful. Uh, please subscribe to our channel if you're new here. And I appreciate you watching. Take care.